What I'm wondering is, how will you deal with if there are all sorts of obstacles and blocks and political agendas and sort of thing you mentioned, sir? Um, because I know for Elena, she's, she's really had to push on through a lot of frustration that uh, probably really wasn't necessary and that has wasted money and time. Um, so I guess being very realistic, how can we all make a, a council, when the councillors don't have all the power, of course, there's the whole, the staff, the CEO, have you got any ideas as to how you can kind of turn things around? So, so hang on, it's a question on collaboration, I think. Oh, and, and dealing yeah. with yeah. the frustrations of how things have been done in the past so they can be done better in the future. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, Sue. Um, so I can't speak for what's gone on in the past. Um, I honestly have not been a part of uh, understanding that fully. Okay, so I can't speak to that. Um, I have, however, worked in uh, areas that require conflict management yeah. skills, yeah. um, uh, frontline services with people who have differing views, differing agendas, um, and I can honestly say that I will work my hardest to work amongst others mm. um, who have differing views to me. Yeah. Um, I think everybody deserves a right to have a say, um, but then I honestly believe that as a council, Council needs to work for the whole of the city of Onkaparinga, yeah. and we have to have a broad view and have um, respectful dialogue. And I want to be a part of that. Thank you. Well, exactly a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, you know, I I think that um, you know it's, sometimes it, it's. Actually, this is the kind of thing that uh, I'm sure Moira would have loved to have answered, but I'm not going to let it. But uh, generally, um, the mayor can take a leadership. <laughs> a leadership. So the mayor can take a leadership role. Right. So we need to. Ha I believe it would help to have team building. So if you've got 12 different people and they've got completely disparate views. Um, you know, the more team building exercises you've got, the better. Um, we had a few of those and, you know, they were really good because, you know, you know, one of the most important things, I think, is to um, talk with each other, get to know each other a little bit, so that if you have a concern with somebody else, you go to that person and you talk, talk that through with them. Um, you know, I've got, I would have no problem, you know, talking with anybody, including the people who are sitting here next to me tonight, if either of them got, got elected with me. Um, you know, that's why I, I bring people together in these kind of positive forums. So um, I would be happy to work as a team. As far as um, you know, stopping serious issues happen, um, I would be really in support of having um, an anti-bullying policy. So that there actually there are some other councils that have had issues, and um, there are ways that you can bring councillors to the table if they're not being very nice to each other or if they're ganging up on other people. Um, there are ways that you can bring them to the table and oh. get good resolutions. All right. Anyway, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. yeah. What do you call? Right. Yeah. Um, well, I'll be straight and honest with you. I probably have the least experience dealing with this kind of thing out of the um, other available candidates. But um, at university, I'm doing a politics uh, degree and obviously there's a lot of, no one agrees really in the class. I mean, it's all, it's all over. So I know that there'll be a lot of uh, like they said, uh, conflict management and trying to work around with other people's ideas. Um, I'm sure my uh, my enthusiasm would get stifled a little bit by the politicking and uh, the, the forced, almost, collaboration. Um, but, I mean, that's just part of it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Radio, so the next one's Roman. Um, yep. I have a question to call you. Study is quite challenging and time consuming occupation. Uh, do you see yourself easily available for all these meetings and involvement for council matters while being studying and plus you know, doing money on the side to support yourself? Um, well, that's 
Yeah, that's a fair question. It's definitely something that I'm going to have to manage. Um, it's probably just going to go down to a less time on video games, more, um, <laughs> more time getting assignments out of the way early so that I can actually attend to the people. Um, but yeah, time management is definitely something that, if elected, I'm, I'm going to have to work on to make sure that I can actually uh, reach the community in that way, while, whilst balancing um, uh, the last year of study. But um, after that, I'm not, I'm not doing an honours after that, it's, uh, next year will be my last year. So at, at worst, I'll have one bad year and then three good years <laughs> of, of managing it. At worst. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was only for Colt, I think. That oh, okay. You don't want to ask you how you manage it, how you're going to manage. It's a common question. Okay. With all the commitments and jobs and oh, stuff, how, okay. how do you find time to, mm. to see it? Thanks. Um, look, it's been extremely busy. Um, you know, I know that when I got voted in, people said, "Oh, it's not a job. Don't think of it like a job." You know, because it's twenty one thousand dollars a year. Um, some people would say that's a lot of money. Other people would say that's not very much money. Um, but you know, I viewed it as a job, and I um, and I work it like a job. So I'm I'm busy all day, every day. You know, up until late at night, actually, doing council work. So you just you just make it fit somehow. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Ryan. Look, I think um, it's an old adage, but if you want to get something done, you ask a busy person. Um, I sorry, it's cut out again. Um, turn on and off. Yeah. Um, so look, I have had multiple roles in my life. I am a mother. I'm a grandmother. I look after um, my parents at times, and I work part-time, I volunteer part-time, and I do all these things. Every year, I take stock. Every year, I have a look at what is the priority for me in this season. My seasons are changing. My children are getting older, they're not needing me to drive them around as much because they're getting their own licenses. It's changed for me and I was looking to where can I best serve my community in this next phase and um, this is what I've put my hat in the ring for and I will do my very best to put enough time in for it to be, um, for my commitment to be worthwhile. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Robin? Uh, yeah, uh, we, uh, I, I noted it earlier, earlier tonight, uh, a, a combination of two things. Uh, violent, uh, there's a lot of like uh, uh, cultural land uh, that isn't really being used, and also and also need for public housing or community housing. Uh, would would the council be open to the idea of co of working with community groups like the stables, for example, and offering in order to make uh, the current uh, community housing stock available for homeless people, uh, for people that are in public housing or community housing, an option uh, to uh, to rent, to buy, uh, in where uh, the council will develop uh, a percentage of their of their own land for people that are in community slash public housing. Uh, people will, will uh, people will, uh, uh, and in any doing so, people would agree that the rent in which they will pay actually goes towards paying, actually paying it, paying it off, and lift, and in doing so, lift themselves and and, and potentially their children, uh, children's family out of poverty. Uh, well, how would you see, what's your take on, on that idea? Thank you. Sorry about that. It's all right. Thank you for that question. Look, housing is in the forefront of my mind. Um, I, like I said, I have teenagers that are going to want to move out of home and it doesn't yep. look like they're going to for a really long time. Um, I think that we need to get all the stakeholders together, have a really big conversation and think creatively about ways that we can move people into housing, that that's what they want. Um, my neighbours, um, the street that I live on was all um, social housing um, about 20 years ago. Um, there's only two social housing houses on there at the moment um, and two others were bought 
did the rental thing through Housing SA, um, but there are two that are still rentals. Um, so that sees a change that has happened in our local suburbs over time, and I really want to be a part of having that creative conversation about how can we move forward with people being able to have a safe roof over their head, because everyone deserves that. Thanks for your question, Robin. I really love that question. I'd love to have the opportunity to answer it as well. Um, I've been pushing hard to um, try to work on ways to end poverty and help people with their um, you know, housing needs um, the whole time that I've been in council. And, um, you know, there was a housing needs analysis uh, brought forward and um, I tried, well I moved the motion but it didn't, it didn't get supported. So if we had a group of councillors who were in support of a housing needs analysis or even just to admit straight up that we are in the middle of a housing, uh, homelessness and housing crisis, you know, there is so much you know, that we could be doing um, as a council and in collaboration with, with state and federal government. You know, for starters, the council could get together with other councils and have a very strong voice to state and federal. Um, you know, the state of affairs that we have right now is absolutely disgusting. And to have people just say, no, I don't want to deal with that, or no, I'm not interested in a housing needs analysis. You know, when we've got 170,000 people here and some people here, um, we've got suburbs here that are the lowest socioeconomic <coughs> suburbs in Australia here. So it's a really urgent pressing issue. Council could be a big player and could do a lot. So I would like to see it do a, a lot more. Um, well, I think this is also part of the, uh, the, the cost of living crisis that I talked about. And um, I think this is going to start to apply to me in the future years when, uh, on a personal level, um, when I hopefully start looking for a house in this uh, not so great housing market, not so great for buyers, I suppose. But um, you mentioned work, working with the, the community groups. Um, and I think that could be a big part in solving the issue. I think we need more uh, more integration with the council into the community and, and working with these groups. So I, I can't speak for the next council, but I would, I would be really uh, open to working with those groups. Right. And also, uh, for me to interrupt, uh, I have slightly, slightly different question. It, it's in regards to uh, beach road. Uh, I basically believe for most of my life we live, we live in killing you know either side of beach road has the worst form of rail. Uh, and apart from the 250 uh, 300 meter sections of either side of or of the southern expressway, I noticed uh, the entire section between uh, South and Dyson Road had. Uh, it's basically turning to over, over the years, just patches of replaced, uh, uh, replaced roadway. Uh, would used to be open to the idea. I know, I know, I know. It's not a, a, a local council road, but it's a state main road. Would used to be open to the idea of petitioning the state <coughs> government uh, to upgrade that section of of Beach Road. Well, um, to be honest, I can't say that I'm, I'm too familiar with the issue. Um, but I think if, if the people want it, then I, th I certainly think it's the role of the council to elevate the people's voices and to um, talk to the state government to get that issue solved. So, Robin, are you talking about the beach road that's in front of Colonnades? Uh, yeah, not just in front of Colonnades, but the entire section of beach road, uh, uh, basically, not just in front of colonies, but the entire section between Dyson Road uh, through to South Road, uh, <coughs> that whole section, uh, three or four, which is about uh, four or five, three or four kilometres worth uh, through, get yeah, through. Uh, it's ba yeah, it's basically that the last, with, uh, last in connection between Dyson Road and South Road before and as we heading. What's the problem with that? Uh, essentially, uh, essentially, apart from the section uh, immediately neighbouring the Southern Expressway, uh, uh, it's just uh, instead of the uh, instead of uh, instead of being upgraded over the years to cater with the growth of 
of the south, uh, whenever whenever ascension needs to be repaired, it's just it's just that immediate ascension uh, at different spots along. So you're talking about the road, the actual road itself? Yeah. Are, are you by any chance talking about for Vision. pedestrian or just for the vehicles? Both. Okay, because I'm thinking you might be talking about the pedestrian aspect of it, which maybe people aren't looking at. Okay, so, um, yeah, so as Cole said, the, um, the road there is a responsibility of state government, but yeah. there was a, a local roads and infrastructure grant that was given out and um, to councils as well. So they've been working in collaboration to get um, <coughs> roads up upgraded. Um, obviously, footpaths and bike tracks are the responsibility <coughs> of council. Yeah. Um, I would be more than open to, you know, hearing from the residents about... Um, you know which parts need to be upgraded and how and then doing the advocacy to the state and also um, having a, a good look at the budget and looking at the different priorities yeah okay i kind of agree with this. the um yeah petitioning for um support along that i drive on that road very often it does have a lot of potholes in it um at the moment particularly i think because yeah it, it's just time uh, I'm sure those things are on a schedule, um, so that would be just highlighting that can it be elevated into into a schedule. Um, but uh, definitely, there are quite a few people who commute uh, on their push bikes down that road as well, yeah. um, and so that could be something that, if it's needed, could be looked at. Right. So the last person. So, so wow, these people come in. Um, so, Jackie, you're a Knox Ward candidate. Did you want to come up here in the panel and ask a, uh, answer any questions of the um, people who are here, or do you want to just wait maybe to the next segment? I'll, I'll just wait. Yeah. Just yeah. wait. Right. So, right, so, so the last person questions? to talk. Well, Tony. Yep. Right. Oh, question is actually to the two outside. Outside people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all three will answer. Well, I'm going to say yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> but basically, I could give you a situation. You're sitting in the strategic committee or meeting, and you get a very, um, very, um, very good document, well written. It's got all the particulars in it. And it looks like everything's been done, everybody's happy with it. What do you do? Do you investigate it? Do you, do you question it? That's what my question is to you. There is a reason for this. That, rest, that document that you received, which went through the strategic committee, is completely false. It, you could have made it up. It could have been made up. In fact, it was. It did not have a bit of truth from the first line to the last one. Are you talking about the council reports? I'm talking about a report which has come from the camp from yep. the internal right. council. Now, what do you do? Do you ever are you going to investigate every document that comes through, or are you going to take it to somebody who says, "Oh, this has been proposed," and look at it? It's, they've said they've done all this. Okay. And well, none of it's true. We'll let the two of you speak Where first. Where do you stand? Yeah. Because do you just forget it? I look, you know, I just follow on the road. Or do you just, out of your own curiosity, investigate? Just a question. Thank you, Tony. Um, I've learnt quite a bit just recently about sources, um, trying to find reputable sources, reputable, depending on tomato, tomato. Um, and so I would want to know where those sources are. Um, and most documents have their references and their sources on it, and so I may ask a question like that, um, but I've not been in that situation, but I'm definitely a curious person. Well, yeah, similar to that answer, I suppose, I'm doing a lot of research in the union, looking at the sources, making sure, making sure that they're reputable. What a record, good <laughs> counsel. Okay. <laughs> Whether it is, would you trust the document? I mean, so the situation is, if you don't understand what's in there, and don't even bother to go out and investigate it, you never know. So that's I, my problem. Yeah, I think it makes sense for 
in, in council, not just to uh, not just to be the final say that signs a piece of paper, but about actually be part of the process. So I, I'd like to hope that if, if I get into the position, I'm I'm signing off on things or I'm, I'm confirming things, that I would have actually been part of that process, so that it wouldn't have been all, I, I guess, done out of my view, and then I just get the final product. I want to be part of the process. Because yeah. basically, that didn't go into the council. Into council, and some of the people voted against it. And some of the people voted for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't get past it. Yeah, yeah. I'm burning to reply. Yeah, you admit, admit, I want to have my go to. Um, yeah, look, I absolutely reflect a little bit on what each of the other candidates have said here, and I noticed uh, Maura and others uh, nodding their head that as uh, elected members, you expect us to be part of the process, and there are generally elected member workshops that are run on various major projects. When it's about an upgrade of a street and things like that, these aren't the kind of things that are brought to us. And so we may not know actually whether that report is actually thorough or correct or whatever. And so it is incumbent on elected members to um, be familiar with what's actually going on in, um, in their wards and go and meet the residents that live at that area and just check with them and you know, make sure that they're okay with what's in that report as well because I, I think that's actually the responsibility of an elected member. Yeah. 